USAjobs.gov sees about 18 million applications each year. And out of that, about three to 4% of people actually get job offers. So that's a whole bunch of people that are left with a negative view of the federal hiring process. But there could be some clear reasons why this is happening. Let's get into it. First is the information in your resume has nothing to do with the job position. Human resources might read your entire resume, but they probably won't. They'll look at the first position, maybe the second, maybe even the third position. And the reason is clear. You have 10 page resumes or eight page resumes, 100 people apply. What is that? That's 800 pages. And that's just for one job announcement. They have multiple job announcements that they're managing. So you're talking about thousands of pages that you expect them to read. It's not going to happen. And if you get referred, let's say 20 people are actually referred to the hiring manager. Do you think the hiring manager is going to read over 100 pages? 20 people, 20 times 8, right? What is that? 160. You think a hiring manager is going to read 160 pages? That's not even their job. Their job is not human resources. Their job is to focus on the organization or in the office that they're managing. That's their job. So they're not going to have the time to do that. They're going to look to see what sticks out to them. Is there a success story? Is there a strong achievement? So many people waste that first page where you could be stuffing it with value, with valuable nuggets of information. Instead, you have this long summary. I mean, what do you expect them to do with that summary? They're not hiring you based off of the summary. They want to see actual relevant experience in there. And if you're applying to be a cook, the verb cook better be in your resume because otherwise you're just wasting your time. You can't just take one resume and apply to all these job series. It needs to be relevant. Okay, next is people do not apply enough. They either apply one, two, or three times and they say, well, I can't get in. Let me try to get another job. Listen, it's going to take more than just one time, one application. Now I've met people who actually applied one time and got a federal government job, but that's the anomaly. That's not everybody. That is not the expectation when you're getting into this. You could be the perfect candidate with the perfect resume and you can apply and still not get the job. You need to adopt the mentality of apply and forget, apply and forget. Do not sit up late at night and wonder what's happening with my resume. I was referred, but they're not contacting me for an interview. Yeah, that stuff happens. Apply and forget. Next is you're applying for government jobs with a private sector resume. This usually happens when a person pays a company or pays a person to write their resume and the person or the organization they're paying, they have no idea on how to construct a federal resume. It's different than if you're applying for the private sector. I talk to people every week. I pull up their information on the computer. I'm looking through it and it's clear this is a private sector resume. It doesn't have the right information. It's not going into the right level of detail. If you do not have experience in applying for government jobs, I would encourage you to use the USA Jobs Resume Builder because that will force you to input the right information so you're not disqualified right off the bat. Okay, next is you're not best qualified. People complain all the time to me about veterans preference. They can't get in because a veteran bumped them off the list. Veterans get all the jobs. I hear this stuff all the time. Listen, the federal government is made up 25% of veterans, 75% they're not veterans. So if all the veterans were getting the jobs, this number would be a lot higher. Now you, you could be highly qualified, but are you the best qualified? There's 100, 200 people applying for a job. Are you best qualified? Are you in the top 5%? And if the answer is yes, does your resume reflect it? Because if it's not in there, you didn't do it. You don't have experience, you don't have skills, you don't have the abilities if it is not in your resume. Now, another thing could be, are you marking expert during the self-assessment when you're actually applying for the job? Are you marking down that you're an expert? If you are, then relook the resume. All right, next is you're applying to the wrong job series. You could have five, 10, 15 years of great experience, but you're taking all of that and you're looking at the wrong job series and you're wasting your time applying for that. Now, I understand some people want to pivot. They want to shift complete career directions, and that's fine. But you have to make your previous experience, you have to make it somewhat relevant in order to stand a chance against the competition. I would first try to get into the government and then make that pivot if you're able to. 
Now, if you're still looking for a federal government job, I did a live stream recently where I answer over a dozen questions about the federal hiring process. If you are interested in that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.